us for an extraordinary first look at Disney's Animal Kingdom at Walt Disney World in Florida with your host, Drew Carey, and our special guests from the Broadway hit The Lion King, Label M, Lady Smith Black Mombazo, Jane Seymour, James Keechan family, Tia, Tamara, Taj, and Tavior Mulray, Paul Rodriguez, world-renowned conservationist Jane Goodall, Will Pradell and Danielle Fischel, singing sensation Kimberly Scott, and the animals of Disney's Animal Kingdom, tonight on The Wonderful World of Disney. Michael Eisner, and I am proud to join all the animals and characters in welcoming you to Disney's Animal Kingdom and Walt Disney World. Tonight, you and your family will be among the first to visit and explore this amazing new theme park. Animals have been a very special part of the Disney tradition for more than 75 years. Disney's Animal Kingdom is the culmination of our fascination and love and respect for animals. Welcome to the opening of Disney's Animal Kingdom and Walt Disney World. And welcome to the wonderful world of Disney. I'm Drew Carey, and I can't believe it. I'm actually here in Orlando, Florida for the opening of Walt Disney World's Animal Kingdom. It's great. It's got wild animals, African villages, safaris, live-action dinosaurs, gorillas, natural habitats. It's incredible. And every animal you're going to see tonight was filmed right here in the park. 
There's a lot to do. You ready? Come on, let's go. I'm at the entrance to Kilimanjaro Safaris here in the village of Harambe on the east coast of Africa. At least I think it's Africa. It sure looks like Africa. Hey, how'd they pull this off? The Disney Imagineers who created this place started off by really doing their homework. They went to Africa. Translating those memories into designs for the village and the Kilimanjaro Safaris took place at Walt Disney Imagineering in California. Artists created sketches and designs, models were created, and then architects and engineers got to work to bring these ideas to life. Turning 100 acres of central Florida flatland into Africa's rugged bush country took a million and a half cubic yards of earth. Hundreds of tree and plant species were planted to recreate the look of East African savannas and forests. And then it was time to bring on the new residents and open Kilimanjaro safaris to the public. The excitement is building here at Kilimanjaro Safaris. We're going on a safari with Jane Seymour, James Keach, and their family, and we'll see animals like you've never seen it before. Singing show tunes, wearing funny hats. No, wait, that was a dream I had last night. Sorry. These animals are living in their natural habitat right here at Disney's Animal Kingdom. Joseph Matua, Mayor of Harambe. Hi. Chambo, Chambo. I hope you're enjoying the hospitality of our village, as well as the majesty of our wildlife reserve. Oh, this is it's beautiful, this village. The boys can't wait to see the rhinos and the lions. Yeah. Ah, keep your eyes wide open, and you'll see the animals. We have a saying, what you see with your eyes, you value with your heart. To us, all life is connected like the five fingers on one hand. <laughs> senior animal care people here at Kilimanjaro Safaris, and he's going to take you on the rest of your trip. Great. Great. Why don't we load up? Thanks a lot. This is the entrance coming up here. We, what we've done is recreate Africa today. It's what you would see if you went on safari in Africa today. So this will hopefully whet your appetite so you will get to see the real Africa in the next few years. Great. Oh, look. Oh, there they look, are. There, there look, there they are. Look. Look, do you see the Okapi? Oh, incredible. Yeah. yeah. They have yeah. stripes on, the, on their rear end that makes them look like zebras. Oh, look, I see a monkey. I see a monkey. Oh, that's the black and white colobus monkey. Look at the tail. Look how beautiful that monkey is. You see, there's two of them there. Look at the big you white see? tail. As 
we leave the forest area, we now come to Hippo River. This one's pretty curious right here looking at us. This is a big one. This one probably weighs about 4,000, 5,000 pounds. Now we have a group of ostrich up here. And, uh, and the ostrich is what's interesting about them is when the females lay eggs, the males sit on the eggs half the time. It's a 50-50 arrangement. Look, I see giraffes. Look. Do you see giraffes? Johnny, look there. Right there. there. Oh, look, I see the giraffe's going to come say hello yeah, to us. Yeah, we'll get close. Say hi. Hi. The zebras and the giraffe like to stay together because the zebras use the giraffe as lookouts because the giraffe can see over the tall grass and tell them if there's any lions around. Wait, show me where the giraffe is. Show me which is Johnny. Right there. Right there. Can you say giraffe? Hello, Boobra. What's he eating? It's absolutely fantastic to see it through young kids' eyes. And they get to really appreciate what nature is about. There's a crocodile. Now, here's our crocodile. Oh, look, there's crocodiles. No. What's that noise? What is that noise? It's an elephant. Oh! 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 Now we're entering into our eastern savanna, where we'll see the white rhinos, the larger of the two species of rhinos, the more social ones. I mean, rhinos are incredibly gentle animals. The only time that they get a bad reputation is when they're persecuted by man and they're shot at. We're coming into elephant country here. Elephants. Look for elephants. The reality of Africa is that animals are under tremendous pressure from poaching. There are a lot of situations in Africa now where human populations are under a lot of pressure to feed themselves and animals are not being protected adequately. So the, there's a, a need for sanctuaries like we have here. So big. Hello. Hello, lion. See how proud they are, huh? They, we put them high up so they can look at the rest of the savanna because they like to watch all the other animals out here. I thought it would feel like it was a, a park, like a, an amusement park or something, and it does. You really feel like you're in Africa. It's giraffes and zebras and all together. It's um, it really is a circle of life. <laughs> Thank you, Rick. As they say in Africa, Kwaheri. 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 Thanks, Rick. Thank, Thank you. you. Hey, after the break, get ready to go back in time. Back in time? I picked 1975, my senior prom. Only this time, I'll have a date. Hi, I'm standing in front of the Dino Institute here at Dino Land, USA, home to the friendliest fossils in America. Only friendly because they're dead. Now, scientists have argued for years about exactly what drove these giants to extinction. We think it was because they were too handsome and rich. Poor Brad Pitt. But now, the Dino Institute has figured out a way to take you back in time to answer this riddle for yourself. How did they do that? I figured if I wanted the real scoop on time travel, I'd better go see those Imagineers. Now, they wouldn't tell me either, but they did show me how they brought the dinosaurs back to life. Like all good actors, they need direction. In this case, the audio animatronics programmer who orchestrates each and every lifelike movement for their performance. In the end, it all comes together to create a thrilling race against time. It's fast, it's a blast, and it's in the past. It's Countdown to Extinction. Hi, welcome to Dino Land USA, where you get to travel back millions of years, back when Ricky loved Lucy and people played Pong in a covered wagon. Oh. Here to tell more about it is from Sister and Sister, T and Tamara Mowry, and from the smart guy, Taj Mowry, and the little brother, Tavier. Yeah, like it's all filled with bones or something. 
Are you kidding? It's super cool. We're in close contact with dinosaurs, the terrible lizards. They've been dead for 65 million years. 65 million years. It's a long time. Oh, okay, great. Uh, ancient dead lizards. None spooky about that? Yeah. Listen up, Pop Quiz. <laughs> Dinoland USA is a place where you can A, dig for fossils, <laughs> B, learn about prehistoric reptiles, <laughs> or C, play! If you guess all of the above, you can move on to the next level. If not, you have to run for your life from a ferocious T-Rex. Fossil also comes from the Latin word facilis, which means the gut. Exactly. Fossils are found in sedimentary rock, which was soft, but was hard millions of years ago. All right, boys, moving ahead. Right. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. What is that? The fossils tell us everything we need to know about dinosaurs, how big they were, and how fast they could run. I'm Bonsai, Jake. Hey, Google here. You know, to find out what they ate, we look at coprolite. Hi, I'm Juliet. That's fossilized dinosaur poop, by the way. I heard a theory that the massive extinction was caused by a huge asteroid hitting the Earth. The debris that was dislodged blocked out the sun over a period of years. Most vegetation would have died. So do you want to see it? See what? Right this way, ladies and gents. Straight ahead. There's hey, man. Hey, how you doing? OK, yeah, right up here on the front car. Oh, yeah, and uh, don't forget to put on your safety belt. Oh, and make sure they're nice and snug. Now, the asteroid <laughs> won't actually hit the vehicle, but there may be a bit of an impact. Hey, aren't you guys coming with us? No, no, we've got to try and get you back. Enjoy the meteor shower. Hey, who are you guys? I've been all over this place. It's incredible. We're now looking at the Tree of Life. Now, that place is full of bugs. So, I sent my buddy Paul Rodriguez down there. I told him it was full of candy. Here at Disney's Animal Kingdom, we like to give equal time to all the members of the animal population, including, yes, insects. You know what I'm talking about. Bugs. Now, bugs really have gotten a bad name. I mean, the very word bug means bad, right? Like, stop bugging me, right? But this species of animals is, quite frankly, the target of uh, a lot of intolerance and downright murder is what I'm talking about. Let me explain to you. They've gotten a raw deal. You know, bugs and people are, 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 are like the most you know, if you'd like to have your very own unique bug experience, you can. Right here at the roots of the Tree of Life, you got to put on this special pair of bug glasses and you're in business. Wow, man, these glasses are so thick you can see tomorrow. Now, come on. Excuse me, pardon us. Hey.
right, there. Now I have seen and counted every single animal on the street. And as you can tell by now, this ain't your ordinary tree. It's the tree of life, standing in the heart of Disney's animal kingdom, and it is covered with animals from its roots all the way to its branches. It is by far the most amazing tree that Disney Imagineers have ever grown. Now, how did they make that happen? Building trees is nothing new to the Imagineers. Walt Disney had them recreate the Swiss Family Treehouse for the Magic Kingdom theme park. But the Tree of Life looks like no tree anywhere. The Imagineers wanted to create a symbol that would reflect the richness and diversity of animal life and the world of nature. And they wanted this tree to be big. The trunk is tough as steel and was so big it had to be flown in piece by gigantic piece and assembled on site. The trunk was then covered with a special cement that could be sculpted by artists from around the world. It took hundreds of Imagineers and more than three years to bring the Tree of Life to life here at Disney's Animal Kingdom. Check this out, man. A turkey leg. It's really not, it's actually, it's dinosaur meat, right? This is a dino park. Yeah, dinosaur meat. Stretched stretch from the dinosaurs that we grow here in Dinoland, where nothing can go wrong. Go wrong. Go wrong. <laughs> wonderful world of Disney will continue in a moment here on ABC. We now return to the wonderful world of Disney. Hi, here we are starting off on the Kilimanjaro Safari. Here's my friend Hedda. She's from Ghana. She's going to take us around and show us what's what. What's coming up next? Well, we just passed the Okapi. Maybe we can still spot them. They're usually on the right. Have you ever I seen them active and dancing around? No, not at all. <laughs> That'll be the day. <laughs> Another lazy animal, the hippo. I don't think hippos are known for their uh, hard endeavors. And I never heard of the hippo bank or the, you know, hippo skyscraper. I don't think they do a lot. <laughs> the hippos are underwater. Hippos there are they are. Can you see? You can see the bodies there? in the water right there. Do a hippo hurricane holler. <laughs> I asked for a hippo hurricane holler, buddy. I get one, don't I? White rhinos. Yeah. Come on, let me get out of here. I'll ride the rhino for you. No, oh, I can't? Oh, well. Here, yeah. rhino, rhino, rhino. Here, rhino. Oh, Dude, that was a good lady. Come on, do something about it. Come here. I'll take you on. Got some rhino chow over here. Come on. Rhino chow. So they sleep 18 hours a day? Yeah, 18 to 20 hours a day. And we're not keeping you up, are we? Sorry. <laughs> Keep down the noise down there. I'm trying to sleep 18 hours a day. Hey, why don't you get up and dance for the money we're paying, huh? Gee. <laughs> and that? these are the eland. Eland? Yeah, largest of all the antelopes. And here are your sausage trees. Oh, these are sausage trees. Yeah. These are really cool. This is where German sausages come from. <laughs> 
All the kielbasa in Cleveland comes from trees. <laughs> oh my God, what's that? Where? Uh, fake it, fake it. <laughs> <laughs> cheetah, 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 cheetah. Here, cheetah. Here, cheetah, cheetah. Here, cheetah. Big truck full of meat here. <laughs> up to the zebra and the wildebeest as well. Do the zebra and the wildebeest usually hang out together in a group? Because I always see them together every time I come through here. Yeah, they do. The zebras stick together, and if there's a predator, they form this kind of pattern that confuses the predator. That's why you always see them in a herd. Now, is that giraffe, are those giraffes part of a whole family, or are they just meet, you know, when the park open? Yes. Part of a whole family? <laughs> yes, they are. Because, hey, you know, this could be a nice swinging singles place for the animals. There's an elephant playing fetch right now. <laughs> I threw that stick earlier about an hour ago. <laughs> the great to flamingo. Flamingos are also very popular in Cleveland. You see my lawns everywhere you go. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, here we are at the end of our safari. It was really fun, wasn't it? Yeah. Saw a lot of animals. Disney's Animal Kingdom is the biggest Disney theme park ever created. Just consider some mind-boggling statistics. Number of cubic feet of dirt moved, 4.4 million. One million square feet of rock work created. Number of plants installed site-wide, 4 million plus. Number of animals at Disney's Animal Kingdom, over 1,000. Number of animal species, 200. Weight of the Tree of Life, 4 million pounds. Number of bugs in the Animal Kingdom, a million billion. Heaviest animal in Disney's Animal Kingdom, the African elephant at 10,000 pounds. Pounds of food eaten by an elephant in a day, 25. And the heaviest elephant poop ever recorded, 300 pounds. I'm privileged to introduce our next guest. She spent most of her life in the African wild observing and studying chimpanzees. Please welcome Jane Goodall. Well, I was interested in animals from a very tiny little girl. And it was when I was 11 that I began dreaming of going to Africa and living with animals and writing books about them. Perhaps one of the most exciting moments was the very first time that I was able to get close to a group of three chimpanzees. I came upon them unexpectedly out of the vegetation. And of course I expected them to run away, and they didn't. And it was just a very, very thrilling moment. They looked up stared at me and then continued their grooming. I'll never forget when the old female Flo had her infant. And it was the first wild chimpanzee infant I'd ever seen close up, and that was Flint. And the time when Flo came really close and she actually allowed Flint to reach out and touch me. And, you know, that was an amazing moment that I'll never forget. And then, then there's the, um, the distance call the greeting, which we call a pantu, which if I was arriving and there were chimpanzees over there and I wanted to know who they were, I would do the pantu. <laughs> Coming to a place like this, which isn't in the wilderness, but has been so skillfully created that we almost appear to be in the wild, I think will be very mind-blowing for many people. And I can walk past here and, you know, feel, yes, I can use my binoculars. There might be a gorilla in the forest there, and they can hide away, which is exactly what they do in the wild, so that people get a very real experience, and one which I believe will be very meaningful to very many people, especially looking into the eyes of a gorilla when he can go away and he can vanish in the forest. He isn't cooped up in a tiny cage with no possible opportunity to go away. I think it's wonderful. Hi, we're here at Camp Mini Mickey. I'm Drew Carey, star of the Drew Carey Show, Wednesdays at 9 o'clock on ABC. And you are? Uh, well, I guess since he doesn't want to talk to me, uh, we'll head on over to Gorilla Falls with Will Friedle and Danielle Fischel. And you know what happens when the gorilla slips, don't you? Gorilla falls. <laughs> okay. Disney's Animal Kingdom is exciting and so unique. 
You can get buzzed by bugs, go on an African safari, you can even come face to face with a dinosaur. Yeah, there are a lot of opportunities for close encounters with animals. Right now, we're heading into the jungle to meet African lowland gorillas. Let's go. All right. Jumbo, bumbo, jumbo, jumbo. Now, there was just a baby, and it was just born here, right? Right. It was born at the kingdom. That's right. You know, out of the, um, out of the primates, gorillas are really tend to be the most gentle of the, of the, animal, of the animal kingdom, actually. They, they don't, they're not aggressive, they're not vicious, they're not meat eaters, and they won't attack you. As long as you pretty much keep your distance, keep you your respect dist them, they respect you. So it is like a human being. Sure. Somebody comes right. after your family or something sure. like that. Sure. It's incredible. So is this the only place we can find the gorillas, or is there someplace else? No, actually, there's several locations. If we walk around the corner here, we may be able to see the other family. Oh, great, thanks. You know what I really want to go see? What? The hippos. <gasps> hippos. We go hippos. Hippos. We go hippos. Great. hippos. We'll go see hippos. you later. Have a great day. Thank you. are fascinating and fun. With natural habitats being threatened and many species endangered, we're learning that if we want to continue to enjoy these animals, we've got to preserve them. Conservation Station is a place dedicated to the care and protection of animals both in the wild and here at the Animal Kingdom. Want to go check it out? I want to see. Let's, Let's go. go. Come on. The message here for kids is conservation is cool. There's a lot of interactive displays where you can talk to real conservation heroes from all over the world. Interact with animal caretakers, get into the groove with the songs of the rainforest, and get up close to baby animals. All right, now we're up to what we think is our favorite part of Conservation Station. That's actually getting to be up close and personal with some of the animals that are here. And we're here with Trisha. Now, what kind of animal is this? This is called a kinkajou. A kinkajou? Yes. And people often think they're monkeys, but they're not. They're actually related to the raccoon. Here you go, Danielle. Here you go. Thank you. Come on. There you go. There you go. Good girl. <laughs> I also took in the Flights of Wonder Bird Show at the caravan stage. That is amazing. We are here with Birdman extraordinaire, Steve Martin. Hi, Will. How are you doing? Great. And I think you're going to tell us all about these birds. You what was that? You. That was a green-winged macaw. His name is MacGyver. MacGyver. Part of our show here, all the birds in our show are free flight. They go fly around the amphitheater and head on back. Tell me what kind of bird this, this is. This is Groucho. He's a yellow naped Amazon parrot. Now, Groucho's learned to sing a couple of songs. Let's see if we can get him to sing one or two. Here we go. <laughs> this is a toco toucan, and they're the largest species of toucans in the whole world. They're found in South America. You want to feed them in grape? Sure. Here you go. Okay. Hold your arms straight out that direction. Straight out like this. Hold the grape up a little bit. There you go. There you go, Sam. There, there you are. go. Now Good you're talking. Boy. Foot on Look the bird. Look at that. There you go. Slow wow. down. There you 
go. They, come on over here. This is Niles and Maris, East African uh -huh. Crown. <laughs> Niles and Maris Crane. This is uh -oh. Niles right this here. This is Niles. Now, how, how long? I noticed their wings are huge. How long that is their wingspread? That wingspread is just about six feet. Thank you very much. Thanks, I appreciate well. it. You know, this has been the coolest day. Now, I was going to do a big musical dance number, but since there's some rule against fat guys taking their shirt off in the park, I'm going to hand it off to someone else. Here's 11-year-old singing sensation Kimberly Scott to perform the song We Are One from the upcoming Disney movie Lion King 2, Simba's Pride. My life I've watched and learned from animals. Knowledge from my 38 year study of chimpanzees, our closest living relatives, has helped to blur the line that once was perceived as so sharp, dividing humans from the rest of the animal kingdom. After all, we're not the only beings in this world with personality, rational thought, and emotions such as joy, sorrow, and despair. How tragic then to know that the natural world is shrinking, animal species vanishing. If you too are concerned, won't you help to join the fight to save the natural world? Not only for the animals, for the sake of our children and theirs. <laughs>
Well, I hope you had as much fun at the Animal Kingdom as I did. Good night. Accommodations provided by the Walt Disney World Swan and Dolphin Hotels, minutes from Disney's Animal Kingdom.